What's up guys, we are in the lab today. Yes, I am wearing my Tampa Bay Buccaneers sweater because I love my team no matter what. And I will still wear my colors even after a horrible loss at home. Anyways, besides the point, today we are going to show you how to check fuel pressure on a Jeep TJ. All right guys, so we've got our TJ here. You might remember this one from the other video where we did the head gasket. Um, I'm sorry, not the head gasket, the valve cover gasket. And we had our friend Kevin with us um, who helped you know, explain some of the stuff that we were actually looking at while we were doing that change. But guess what? Kevin's back. Hi guys. And we are going to check the fuel pressure on this because if you remember from the last video, we checked the rockers and whatnot because it was sputtering when it got to about 2,500 RPMs uh, and we were messing with the fuel system and it was kind of bogging down and dying out on itself when we held it down. And then we kind of had to go to our local auto parts store and retrofit a kit to check the fuel pressure, which really wasn't the best. We just kind of made it happen, but we didn't get the numbers we really wanted in that. So Kevin did a little bit of research for us, found a kit online that had the correct connections that we need to be able to really do a true test on this, get some correct numbers on it. So we're gonna do that today, and we're gonna show you the kit that Kevin found, not the only one, but one of the few that he found that will work with this TJ plug and play, and then we're gonna run the test. Let's get to testing. Hey guys, one of the challenges, if you have a late uh, model uh, TJ from essentially 04 to 06, is the fuel rail, which is right here, doesn't have a Schrader valve or anything for you to hook a pressure gauge up to. As Mark mentioned, uh, we tested this before by disconnecting this fuel connector right here and hooking a gauge into it. Now that's called a static or deadhead pressure. And while that tells you something, you really need to know that your fuel pressure is when the engine's running. So what this kit that Mark showed you has is a T-fitting that goes into one side, into the other, and has the Schrade valve. So give me a second, we'll hook it up, and then we'll hook up for the uh, pressure test. First the safety clip comes off, slide that back. There's a thousand different versions of this little tool here. And now all we got to do is work this back and off. And so now you've got the fuel rail and the fuel line. And we're going to take the little Schrader assembly and find a routing that fits. So it clicks on like that. And probably should have brought it around the other way. There we go. And it's tight, but we're ready to start it. All right, so Kevin got everything hooked up. We're gonna go ahead and turn it over. Right now, we're just gonna check for the leaks in the system and make sure that all our fittings are the right way. So, Kevin, go ahead. All right, I'm pumping. Yeah, any leaks? All good. Starting. Maybe. Did it read anything on the gauge? No. Uh, oh, just under 10, just a little. Uh, we're having some real fuel issues. Ah. The battery, really? Yeah. I just had it on the charger. It was reading 70% too. Yeah, well, let's check All the right. connections. We'll be right back. A few moments later. 12 seconds later. Eventually. Uh. All right, so we got her cranked up. You can see right now, 
she is sitting at 32. And that's with the engine running. Now let's rev it, Mark, and keep an eye on that gauge. Drops. Dropped all the way down to 15. And we're supposed to be running at 58 PSI. I'd say that's definitely a cause for bad, uh, bad run. We're running right now at 20. Yeah, the Jeep engine will run lower. It won't run well. Right. But we either have a bad fuel pump, a plug filter, a bad regulator. All of those are in the same module. Or a problem with the fuel line. When we take the tank down, we'll blow out the fuel line and make sure there's no constrictions. And we'll go from there. Now keep in mind guys too, I know some of you might bring up like injectors or whatever. This actually has brand new injectors that are put in it. The issue is happening before the injectors. It's still happening after the injectors. So we did already do that. So those shouldn't really be clogged up um, adding to it. So basically we're gonna drop this gas tank. I'm gonna add in there, Mark, on the injectors. Uh, the fuel pump that's running well will keep up even with one or two bad injectors. It might drop a little bit, but it won't drop all the way down to 20. All right, let's drop a TJ gas tank. Later that same evening. Hey guys, quick sidebar here. We're getting ready to take the uh, pressure gauge off the fuel system, but the fuel system's still holding some pressure. I'd really rather not have a gasoline bath. So here's the tip for depressurizing the system. We're gonna go to the fuel pump relay, I mean fuel pump fuse. And the reason is we see right here. Yep, and we're gonna wiggle fuel. this little stuck bugger out. And now we're just gonna go turn the key to run one or two times. And Mark, if you keep an eye on that gauge, yep. you will watch it. As soon as I turn the key, the pump won't come on. Actually, I'm going to crank. And we should bleed off pressure. So he's going to crank it now, and the pressure is going to bleed off. Okay, going down, going down, going down, going down, and almost to zero. Do it again. And there we go. And now I can disconnect these fittings without taking a fuel bath. See? Good soup. Just a little spritz. And this one's real tight. We'll say one thing these little disconnectors did not come in the kit, so make sure you guys get those to get the fuel lines. I'll show you. Over here, I got this kit at O'Reilly's and I want to say it was like 10 bucks. This can be for um, fuel and for AC line. So get this before you uh, start the job. All right, so Kevin found a little zip tie in there. What, what you have is the axle vent comes up and it was zip tied to the fuel filler line, which is fine. That's where the factory puts it. But when we drop the tank, we don't want to rip the axle vent line out. We'll restore that zip tie when we put it back in. And these guys here, don't forget you've got your outer mounts and then you've got your inner mounts as well. You got to take this off so that you can get to them. Go ahead and put that guy back on. We went ahead and pulled out um, some jack stands in the jack. We put, uh, we put it up just a little bit higher. Obviously, this is a, uh, a little bit easier to get under if the Jeep's not lifted, which this one is not. It's still factory. Or if you're at a shop, put it on a lift. I've got a nice lift. Unfortunately, it's laying on the ground over there, not installed. So we're doing the best that we can right now. So jack stands, got it up a little bit. We're getting some lights set up, pulling out some tools, and we are going to drop this bad boy. All right, guys, so we are on the driver's side, and this is what we found. You've got your power connector here and your fuel lines and whatnot here. So we are actually going to go ahead and disconnect the power, and then we're going to disconnect these fuel lines. That way, when we drop this tank, everything will come down um, freely. Sometimes you have to drop this halfway down, then you're able to access to get to these. This one makes it a little bit easier. They're all right there. So we're gonna get started with that. I have to follow my own rules, which is just take time and once you get the dirt out, the safety will go and the Mm. That's still got crud stuck up in there. See, I can't even pull the safety down. So we're just gonna keep. We're under the Jeep. 
what Kevin was saying, he's trying to knock out all the dirt that's up in the plug because it won't actually release the red safety tab for him to uh, get in there. So he's basically taking just a little screwdriver, jingling around. It's raining dirt all over his face. He's got his safety glasses on. So uh, Oop, don't call right. us out on that one. But um, take time yeah. with this, folks. Be patient and it will come clean and open. If you try and force it, you'll break it. 20 minutes later. All right. Disconnected, disconnected, disconnected. Now we're gonna grab our 13 millimeter and start loosening up these guys. And over here by the bumper too. And then we're gonna throw us a jack under here so this doesn't come crashing down on me. So much later that the old narrator got tired of waiting and they had to hire a new one. All right, so we got the different lines um, obviously disconnected. There is one on the passenger side on this. This is a 2004. Uh, and then there's also another one on the driver's side. But we're not perfect. We actually had some problems getting the one on the driver's side off. So we just went ahead and swung it out. So we kept it on the jack. Again, we just swung it out here. We went ahead and blew. There was some acorn nuts and whatnot just kind of hanging out here. So we cleaned all that out. We've got this guy here is already free. So we are going to go ahead and pull the sucker out. Late model TJ fuel pump. Well, that's the sender unit, and that's gasoline I'm pouring. <laughs> uh, so that's the fuel sender unit, and it goes up to these two terminal blocks here. And this is the motor. It's hanging in this chamber. Depending on the model pump we get, we may disassemble this, or it may come as a complete unit. We shall see. All right, guys, so that is removing everything out of the TJ. Now it's going to be getting the new part and putting it all back in. And we're gonna show you here um, exactly the new part that we got. So you can see the similarities, exactly what's going on between the old one and the new one. Um, but pretty simple, pretty much drop in, plug and play in that. But uh, yeah, back to work. Hey, Mark, look what I just pulled out of the bottom of the tank. <clears throat> that is the filter sock. Uh, it fell off the bottom of the pump. It normally fits right here. And uh, it feels nice and squishy. And if you look here, you can see the media is clear. I can see my finger through it. I can't see a thing through this intake sock. This is so sludged and slimed up, the pump probably starved for fuel and burnout. We are back. We just got the um, new pump out of the box. Um, we are taking a look at it, just making sure everything is good to go. It does look a little bit different than the factory pump, but the connectors are same, lines are the same, filters a little bit different. Uh, it does come with a new seal for the top uh, that goes over the tank itself before this drops in. So we'll show you that here. Now, see how it sits up? Yep. That's what the springs are for, and we're going to press it down until we can engage the lock ring. Oop. 
New fuel pump is in. We went ahead and took a little uh, punch to tap that and make sure it's completely sealed off. It's kind of hard to get your hand around the top to get it really tight. So um, Kevin just took a, a little punch and a hammer and tapped that shut. Um, don't really need to go over reinstall instructions because you're basically just putting back what you already undid, uh, making sure everything's secure. And then what we did is we ran a, uh, we just ran a test on it. And what was it, 47? Yeah, hey guys. Uh, sorry, we, we didn't video putting it up because it takes all hands and a floor jack to get it up in place and then put the seven bolts in so it doesn't come down on your head. Mark connected all of the uh, fuel lines and vent lines on one side. I got the vent line on the other. Uh, got up, threw the tester on it, kind of excited, fired up, and 47 PSI, both uh, at idle and at full throttle, it never wavered, so fuel pump successfully replaced. All right, so thanks again, Kevin, for helping us out. It's always, uh, when you do this, I recommend a second person anyways, just because pulling that tank up and down was a little tricky and balancing the gas going back and forth. It was a little fun when it's uh, three quarters, or half full of gasoline, and it was sloshed to one side and the other. Yep, so all right, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. As usual, don't forget, like, subscribe, and if you haven't checked out Kevin's uh, podcast, On the Trail with Kevin and Scott, yep. go check that out. We've uh, shared it on the Facebook page, so um, there's a quick link over there. But see you guys next time. Cheers.